Operator safety is a paramount concern. As a charter member of the Water Jet Technology Association, Stone Age both supports and adheres to the operation and safety guidelines as presented in the recommended practices booklet. All personnel should follow these WJTA guidelines when operating water blast equipment. In this exercise, we will cover the maintenance procedures for our SpinCat 287. The SpinCat line features downhole tools for cleaning coil tubing units. The SC-287 model features operating pressures up to 5,000 PSI and flows from 1 to 3 barrels per minute. Reviewing the main components of a SpinCat 287, we have the head, the gland, note the carbide ring, the body, inlet nut, weep cell, and two port screws. Begin disassembly by securing an advice with the inlet nut facing up. With a pick, remove the weep seal. Remove the two port screws with a slot screwdriver. Using the two 2.5 two inch wrenches that came with your spin cat, loosen the inlet nut. Position the lower wrench on the flats for the gland. Unscrew the inlet nut. Note the shaft seal on the inside. We'll tackle that in a moment. Now unscrew the body from the gland. You may need a chain wrench to loosen the body at first. Then you can unscrew the body by hand. Slide the body off the shaft assembly and set aside. Using a pick, remove the carbide seat from the inside of the shaft. Note the chamfer side is facing up. Now remove the high pressure seal. Notice how the o-ring on the seal is off center. Make certain the narrow side is down when reassembling later. Remove the top bearing ring from the shaft. Slide the bronze sleeve off exposing the assembly on the shaft. Remove the weight set. Note the three notches in the weight set match the three posts on the hub. Now remove the hub and spring together. The spring has special ends that fit into the notches on the hub and the collar. With the spring off the shaft, separate the end from the hub. You can also see here where the second spring end fits into the notch in the collar. Remember this when reassembling. Unscrew the collar halves with a hex wrench. Note the relieved groove on the collar faces up. The spring rests on that groove. Pry the collar halves apart with a slot screwdriver. Remove the two collar halves and set aside. Remove the two bearing rings and set aside for cleaning. Slide the gland assembly off the shaft. Place the assembly in a vise with the threads facing up. Remove the o-ring with a pick. The gland assembly has two shaft seals. Gently pry out the first shaft seal with a slot screwdriver. Repeat the procedure with the second shaft seal. Set aside. Finally, using a two and a half inch wrench, loosen and unscrew the gland from the carbide retainer. The carbide ring will slide off. Return the inlet nut to the vise and secure with the threads facing up. Remove the o-ring with a pick as shown and the shaft seal with the slot screwdriver. Your disassembly is now complete. Wash all parts in solvent and blow dry. Examine the wear items and replace if necessary. These are the key wear items to review when performing routine maintenance the high pressure seal, carbide seat, and O-rings. These are seals from a different type of water blast tool, however the wear principle is the same. This is an example of a high pressure seal that we consider reusable. These other two seals are significantly worn and must be replaced. Each of these items is included in our service kit along with viscous fluid, an applicator, and anti-seize. We'll review all the SC-287 maintenance kits at the end of this video. Begin the reassembly process at the press, where you will install the shaft seals and O-rings in the gland assembly and inlet nut. For all of our shaft seals, we recommend using P80 Grippet or a similar lubricant for installation. Begin with the gland, which has two shaft seals. 
Press the first seal into place using our SC250-106 spacer tool which is available in the maintenance kits we will review at the end of this video. The first shaft seal goes in lip side facing down. This second seal goes in with the lip side facing up. Press the second seal into place, once again using a spacer tool. Next, position the o-ring at the base of the threads and set aside. Still at the press, repeat the procedure with the inlet nut, this time with the lip side facing down. Replace the o-ring at the base of the inlet nut threads and set aside. Now it's time to prep the gland assembly. Start by applying blue Loctite 242 on the threads of the retainer ring. Note here the carbide ring is already on the gland. Now screw the retainer ring into the gland. Secure in the vise and tighten with a 2.5 inch wrench. Your gland assembly is now ready for placement on the shaft. Secure the head shaft in a vise. Grease the shaft seals in the gland and at the same time apply grease to the shaft itself. Now slide the gland onto the shaft. Next, put the two bearing rings on the shaft. One more thing to note, there are three bearing rings on the shaft assembly for the SC-287. Two have the same inner diameter and one is slightly narrower. Stack the two wider ones at the base of the shaft and place the narrower one at the top. The collar goes on next. Place the two halves around the shaft and join together with the Allen screws. Use a hex wrench for this step and be certain to tighten the two halves evenly so the gap is the same on each side. Note the relieved groove on the collar faces up. Attach one end of the spring into the hub as shown. With the collar in place, note where the notch is on the collar to receive the spring end. Now slide the spring onto the shaft with the hub end facing up. The bottom end of the spring will fit neatly into the notch in the collar as shown. Match the three notches in the weight set with the three posts on the hub. Now place the weight set onto the shaft. Slide the bronze sleeve over the assembly. Replace the last bearing ring on the top of the shaft. Before we put the body over the assembly, we'll reinstall the high pressure seal and carbide seat. Grease the seal generously and note the narrow end of the seal goes in first. Press the seal into the shaft far enough to leave a 1 16th inch recess as shown. This is where you will place the carbide seat. Remember the chamfer side is up. Brush blue goop on the threads of the gland. Slide the body over the shaft assembly. Hand tighten the body using a 2.5 inch wrench on the gland flats. Next fill the body with viscous fluid. We recommend GP040 viscous fluid which we sell here at Stone Age or you can use a commercially available product like Chevron Hypersyn. As you are filling the body with viscous fluid, pause several times to spin the body and lift it which will help force the air bubbles up and out. Keep filling with fluid until it covers the top bearing. Next, screw in the inlet nut. Brush blue goop on the inlet threads before screwing into the body. Note how viscous fluid oozes out of the ports as you tighten the inlet nut. This is to be expected. Clean off the excess with a rag and tighten the inlet nut using two 2.5 two inch wrenches. Replace both port screws and the weep seal. The lip side of the seal faces down, covering the weep holes on the inlet nut. Your SpinCat 287 reassembly is now complete. Before we finish up, let's take a look at the maintenance support for your SpinCat 287. First, these are the two 2.5 two inch wrenches that come with your SpinCat purchase. Keep them in a handy place. We have a tool kit, service kit, and an overhaul kit. Each of these three kits has a detailed operator's manual in addition to the specific repair items. Let's take a look. This is the tool kit for the SpinCat 287. It contains the spacer tool we used earlier when installing the shaft seals in the gland and the inlet nut. It comes in the SC-287-612 toolkit and we highly recommend you have this tool for your maintenance procedures. Next, let's look at the service kit, the SC-287-612.
the SC287-600 for routine periodic maintenance. It contains a replacement high pressure seal, carbide seat, and two O-rings. It also has a container of viscous fluid and a syringe assembly for applying the fluid into the inlet ports. Finally, it contains a packet of anti-seize for threads during reassembly. Lastly, this is the overhaul kit, the SC287-610. It contains everything the service kit has plus some important additions. Three high temperature shaft seals, three bearing rings, a weep seal, a spring, a bronze sleeve, and two port screws. We keep all these maintenance kits in stock and they can be ordered by number. Our SpinCat tools are field serviceable and combined with the right replacement kits can significantly minimize downtime. Thanks for watching and remember our customer service specialists are always on hand to answer any technical questions you may have.